Who wants to start? You can. You're the leader. Okay. I think, uh, so obviously triathlon is quite a new sport. And um, I think the ratio between men and women is reflecting this. I think it started off as a very male dominant uh, sport, even to the fact that it was Ironman came out of what five guys challenging each other to some epic race. Um, but then I think nowadays you're looking at almost a third of the field being female. Um, maybe having a half distance in this helps as well. And especially with beginning triathlon, like sprint triathlon, um, yeah, I think. The ratio of men to women, probably as you drop down in distance, probably goes up. That's my thought on it. I don't know numbers. Yeah, I think it's really good um, that people are coming into it, and that's from both men and female. I think as long as we keep a fair representation of advertising, you know, to attract both men and female, then I think naturally the numbers will start to become more equal, rather than focusing specifically perhaps on just women, because I think we need to make sure it's still fair, um, and, but making sure we don't create those barriers for men and women in the same way. So if we put in a barrier, that, or there's barriers already in there, women won't necessarily join. Whereas if we just keep it open and fair, then I think the numbers will start to reflect that more. I think it's a very exciting time for a women in triathlon. Obviously, like the numbers are growing at the amateur level, but I think that there's still a disparity that isn't reflective um, of ability or interest maybe is more reflective of barriers to entry. But I think that at the same time, I see a lot of excitement from the amateur level, a lot of um, women really following our journeys and following the top women of the sport. So I think that probably social media has, has been huge in that aspect of creating that connection and showing what women are capable of. Do that? That's a tough question. I thought it was lost to you. Yeah, I think, um, I think in triathlon, if you're looking at headlines as like female stars and male stars, but from my point of view, I'd say it's pretty even. Mm -hmm. Like you have just as much following for someone like Daniela or a Lucy as like a Lionel or a Sebi. And I think that being known as someone's partner um, isn't just like a, a girls thing. I wouldn't say there's a massive difference yeah. of that in triathlon. Like in football, yeah, you very much might get a wife known as like uh, for her husband. Yeah, whereas here, sometimes it can be the other way. You can have like a maybe less well-known male pro who's helping a female pro and he'll get known as like, I don't know. I think from my point of view, that's not a massive Thing in triathlon compared to other sports? I think with triathlon that actually it's a it's a massive positive and no one really seems to focus so much on so-and-so's girlfriend like they're a secondary or so-and-so's boyfriend it's more that the the triathlete themselves realizes at all levels so like from entry to amateur to you know top age group to professionals it becomes all about the athlete and their team supporting them so they don't necessarily have just another half. The athlete openly voices that they're, it's them and their team and we, and that that's a package for them, which is, I think it's really nice in triathlon. Yeah, absolutely. I think that our sport does a pretty good job of celebrating the athlete's accomplishments. And I think that comes from like the structure of the race that we do, how you can so easily see like what the athlete is accomplishing and how like that's broken up by their event and I think the media does a pretty good job of um, recognizing our accomplishments as athletes and I think another thing where like the foundation is very strong is that we're all paid the same amount from a prize money standpoint which is unique to our sport a lot of sports aren't there yet where the prize money for men and women is the same and so I think having that level of equality, that starting point, creates this foundation where we have like more equality from the onset, if that makes sense. It allows like the potential for equal opportunity rather than having to fight for it like other sports are. Right. Yeah. I think um, as we see the progression just generally naturally coming, you know, more women coming into the sport, we're seeing the same amount of proportion going into coaching and into um, the attention going into the apparel as well, definitely. 
Um, I recently did like a coaching course with like the, my national federation, and there was probably um, forty percent were women and sixty percent men. So obviously that's above what we see in participation levels at the moment, which was really good. I thought. Yeah, I mean, I see a lot of women's in like some of the brands that I work with. One of the top executives at Hoka One One is a woman, which I think really speaks to their value as a company. We see um, women at lots of the brands that we represent. And I think that um, that's probably created opportunities for us um, in this sport and investing in us in this sport. Yeah, definitely. And I think, yeah, again, looking a couple of years back, perhaps it was more the role of, of uh, um, the females in the company perhaps more would have a social media role because um, you very much like will see that in a company and less to do with the product and the designing but then you look at something like engineering and it is very male dominant so you can see the reflective side of that um, but with the creativity and the designs and more brands having female lines I think there is a lot more kind of job opportunities maybe even for women coming into the sport um, which again yeah it's making it more exciting for us um, and more exciting for the sport. I've really enjoyed seeing how the companies that and brands that I work with have been asking for our input um, like on how a saddle will fit or how a certain piece of apparel will fit or how the wetsuit fits and I think that that interest and excitement around our bodies and what we're experiencing is going to be really important in pushing this forward for all women who um, want to feel comfortable in their skin when they're swimming, biking, and running. Yeah. I think I think even to the point of like some pro athletes, um, a lot of people like there have been females in the past fallen pregnant and and maybe retired straight away from it. Whereas uh, a lot of girls now that are actually being active on social media, like you can follow their journey through pregnancy and watch their, their kind of return to the sport and their brands and companies getting behind that. I think that's very much been, okay, well, you need a female input. Um, and to see that and watch that and watch a whole kind of new branch of sport coming out from that, that yeah, of course, it's very, like, very much focused on the women, but from a positive point. You're not excluding men. It's just, okay, this is like another dimension to being all-inclusive to everyone. Like, how can you train safely when you're pregnant and how can brands support it being comfortable and accessible? I, we like, see it really clearly, don't we? You know, the products are designed primarily for the male, you know, and then they come trans transfer through into a female fit um, most of the time. I think some companies have got it right and sometimes if we see um, those females in the companies that we were talking about, if we see those role models working really in depth with those products and not just females, males who are in tune or aligned with the fact that there's two completely separate products um, lines that should be available. I think we definitely see a, a, you know, a change in how it fits to us and comfort as well as performance um, and aesthetics as well. So. One thing that I think may be missing is that you see all different types of body types in triathlon, which is something that I find so incredible about the, about the sport and why it's so inspiring to go to a race like Kona or any Ironman event for that matter. There are so many different body types out there getting it done. But I don't know if there are products for all of those different body types. And I think that that leaves some room for growth, perhaps, with a lot of brands creating products that all of those women will feel really good wearing. Yeah, and I think, I think again, like, it's not a separate issue. It's not, okay, like, feel good. There's, there's a feel good wear, and then there's a performance wear. I think, Often for everyone, men and women, I think if you feel good, like, and you look good, and like, you will perform well. And I don't think just necessarily like a lot of the materials often are like not bad for performance. But I think maybe the marketing could sometimes just highlight a bit more that yeah, just because maybe you have a little bit of a larger upper body doesn't mean that you're still not going after performance. Like you can still market like that vest as a performance type of gear. Um, and I think, yeah, 
it, a lot of people in the sport want to be buying things that are fast. Like women can be just as competitive as men. Um, mm -hmm. I think um, basically what you were saying, where you've got different types of um, women, I think key to the, the product lines is that it's, and it's maybe being a bit unfair on the man, but um, if you look at a woman, a woman doesn't want to just be like one type. She doesn't want to be one person the same. A woman, like every woman wants to be slightly different. So I think the women doesn't necessarily need like one product. We want, we want a product that you could maybe choose like, I want slightly more supportive here because this is my body shape. And somebody with a slightly different body shape, they might be taller, leaner, less curvy, might need a slightly different fit. You know, maybe they'll go for the slightly higher leg or, you know, um, more of a racer back rather than a sort of supportive back for the lady who doesn't want, you know, to sh have too much movement in the swimming. So I think um, maybe brands should explore the idea of not just having a women's line, but the ability to mix and match in a way that is most supportive for that one individual. So the woman feels like they are being supported rather than they're just the, a collective of women. Yeah, I think we want options. And I know how I feel when I put on a piece of apparel or a swimsuit that fits me perfectly. I feel like ready to take on any thing that my training or racing demands. And I think everyone who is participating in this sport deserves that same feeling and confidence that comes from like wearing something that you feel really great in. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We probably have different opinions on this. Yeah, I think swimming apparel is a massive one because I think too loose, then you obviously slows you down and you're going to show bits that you don't want to show. Um, and too tight, then you're restricted in movement. Um, and yeah, it's hard because there's so many body shapes out there, um, especially I'd argue maybe more on the female side. Um, that yeah, how do you get that right fit? Um, it is, yeah, often trial and error. Um, uh, but I, I think it's so important. I think swimming is one of the, yeah, most important things, one of the, the places where people will feel most conscious. Um, so to get a right fit is, yeah, key. Yeah. I think great swimming apparel is something that you feel comfortable in when you put it on. When you're on the pool deck, you feel good in your skin. It's not revealing things that you don't want to be revealed and it fits well. But then when you're swimming and actually doing your sport, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it chafing or moving or getting in the way or catching extra water. So it's like you said, it's really a unique category that I think takes a lot of thought and design to get it right for all different sorts of bodies. And it's got to have a range. It's like I, I know I mentioned it before, but different because of the different body shapes, you're not going to get one that's not baggy on somebody and, and too tight on someone else. You're like, it's it's going to happen. There's going to be a conflict. So I think there's got to be, um, you know, either different suits for different body sizes rather than just small, medium, large. Like, you know, we've got the sort of, the we've broken it down, you know, in other some sizes like European, they have like 32, 34, 36. But I think that even that doesn't necessarily cater for, you know, larger women on top, larger women on, bo on the bottom. Um, but I think we all want to look good. I think yeah. that's one of the things that I would mm. draw on mostly is like, if you're going to get on a swimming costume, like you're getting yourself out there, you're exposing yourself. And I think for every woman, it's always about like having the self-confidence to be like, yeah, I'm going to stand on poolside and not try and, you know, hide away. Like, you want to feel good in that swimming costume before you actually start swimming. Otherwise, you just won't wear it. I think that has a different meaning for every woman. Like, some women out there think bold is looking good. Like, being bold, bright, having fun with your colours. And then other women, like, they don't want to draw massive attraction to their swimming costume. So it's that very much, it's not just, like, one, yeah, being different in the fit, but it's being different in the design. And I think also something that we see a lot in the wetsuit ranges are uh, you might get a small men's and a small tall men um, and a medium tall and a medium small, whereas like in the females, normally you get a small, medium and large. Um, and I think, yeah, you have, 
yeah, short, shorter women, you have taller women, and I think that would be a nice, like, another dimension to see in, in the wetsuits. So statistics-wise, like, more women um, have higher cadence, so they're less strong in the arms, but more flexible. So um, maybe for a wetsuit, you're then looking at a more flexible shoulder, um, maybe with a more buoyancy panel or something on the arms, just to get that catch a little bit stronger. And yeah, again, like hip dimension, I guess we all want to be free in the hips, so maybe a little wider around the hips and more mobile. That might, again, maybe be a difference between a male and a female. And with that mobility comes maybe slightly less buoyancy because we don't necessarily need it as much around those key areas. Yeah, I think there's the fit around our hips and around our upper body is unique to a men's suit. And that's something that like really needs to be well thought out in the design of a product because if that's off, then it just throws off the effectiveness of the wetsuit. And so I think that um, taking those measurements of all different body shapes into account is really important to find like best options for a range of athletes. And I guess perhaps the swimming stroke is changing slightly, you know, for women in terms of uh, the distance that we're swimming. So uh, ITU, you know, the short course stuff compared to the long, full Ironman distance athletes, like stroke rate, kicking, efficiency, like that's something to consider, I guess, with uh, the wetsuit fit. I think that we're coming into this era of women's sport and honestly, women in society where we can celebrate being strong and powerful and successful. And I think it's a great opportunity for products to recognize that and to really empower us to take on that image and um, I just think it's such an exciting time to be a female athlete. I hope that brands see that as well and and they can name their products accordingly. Yeah, I don't think there's a masculine or a feminine name. I think names are great, can work like with anything like orca, like such a dominant animal in the sea. Like, and it works well for the women's and the men's ranges. Um, and I think that the, yeah, the names of a product should more reflect like the product rather than the, the audience that you're trying to target. Because yeah, there is again, so much crossover. Uh, there's so much unisex like out there. It's a sport we're all doing and there's so many things that we can both use. And then the, the the places that need to be more specific. Um, I don't think that the names like have that much difference in terms of being competitive or being like, we're all out there to be strong, to be powerful and to better ourselves. So like a common purpose and yeah, maybe the, the brand names should reflect that. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like brand names to reflect performance or types of material or something special or unique about that suit rather than it's female fit or male fit, you know, that could be as simple as just naming them. Um, I think some brands get that right and some don't. Uh, so I think that's already out there. Like we see a lot of the same name being used for both, you know, say a wetsuit, for example, um, and it's just as marketable. Um, but yeah, I think that's a tricky marketing question there as well. I think there's probably some higher level expertise in that. <laughs> I think so too, but also yeah. I always love when brands um, use like their athletes or athletes oh, okay. to name a product, like with an Orca specific wetsuit or something, you could be like the Emma Pellant <laughs> special edition, like women's premium You're going down like a wetsuit. Type. Yes, yes, I love that. Yeah, yeah, I think if there's been like a, like a good input and yeah, then why? Just like really bringing women to the forefront of the marketing of that product, I think is a special yeah. opportunity for a, like. The Rai Rifle. Great. Or the Sidaro the, the Sniper. <laughs> the opportunities are endless. <laughs> it's a good the place to leave it. The possibilities are endless.
Yeah. Because that could work for body shape as well, I guess. Like, you know, rather than being a specific product, that product could be related to that athlete and their body shape. You define and you yourself with by a, a person. A but I guess that comes with the negative of comparing yourself to other people and could be seen as something that you are. Are yeah. you sure you're an Emma Pallant, not a Chelsea Sodaro? <laughs> but when we, you know, are able to showcase and celebrate all the different body types that can participate in the sport. Yeah, I think that all amateur athletes or athletes of all levels can identify with those different body types.